Okay. So first things first. The um, first thing that I suggest when doing a photo is to always, you know, when you're first starting out learning, you should always pick one that's pretty clean and crisp, you know, and I always suggest a portrait first because then you don't have a lot of the background noise and stuff to, to really distract you. So um, this is the photo I chose, but um, the first thing I'm going to do, even though it looks black and white, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change it black and white so that I know for certain there's no tint or color because sometimes when they're like sepia tone or something like that, they have a little bit of a tint to them. So um, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go over here where it looks like a magic wand and it's actually your effects. It'll say Orton at the top and I'm going to scroll down until I see one that says black and white. And I'm just going to go ahead and push apply. And now I'm certain that it's black and white. And I won't get any bleed from other other colors. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to touch the touch up tool, which it'll say touch up if you scroll over it, but it actually looks like a tube of lipstick. Okay, to um, get started coloring, you would scroll down. And I'm gonna I'm gonna touch on a little bit of all these features, but this highlight features is the one that you're you're mainly gonna use. It looks like it's just for hair color, but it's not. You can go down here, you can pick other colors. Say so if we wanted a deep green, for example, you can click the green here and go here and just keep scrolling until it gets to be a deep green. Um, your brush size is adjusted here, and it'll kind of give you an idea what your brush size will be. Okay, the next is your fade. So if I had colored this and I thought well, that's still a little bit too much, and but I like the color, I don't want to change the color, you could actually fade it down by just moving this slider here. Or you can bring it all the way up to give a real, real strong look. So you go ahead and color this, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time, I'm just going to do a real sloppy color, honestly, because I'm just trying to show you where the features are. Um, let me go ahead and color on this. And see, I can see where I got on the screen, and always zoom in. This will really help you get those edges. Make sure you're getting all your edges zoom out a little bit but you can see I got it right here on um, where you make mistakes you can go and there's always a eraser tool here push eraser and just go right over that any places that you got it done when you get ready and you're satisfied with how it looks you're going to push apply and then you'll go on to your next color and again you do that in highlights usually um, it really just depends I've colored in different modes but starting out I suggest in highlights for most things because it's got all of your it's got your rainbow of colors and see I don't I don't really care for this hair color because it's a little bit too yellow for me and let me show you how I would fix that okay let me get this cleaned up a little bit. But I would take this down some, and that looks more realistic. All right, and so you can even fade it down some. But as I want it to just be kind of a casual, I'm going to go ahead and push apply. I'm going to highlight. And, hmm. Kind of like a purple for her hair, her hat color. So I'm going to take my brush size down some and I'm just going to start going in here and coloring. The white is so bright that it's not going to take color, but the, the dark areas will, and that's what I want to kind of take the color. So And I've done this picture itself a few times. So, um, 
and that's basically how you would color everything on this picture. You could you can do different features like um, the eye color and things like that. Let me turn that up some. Um, if you if you wanted to, turn my brush size down a little bit, but you can also do it all in highlights. Um, skin color, I suggest doing other ways. Um, but it's it's really all about what you're comfortable using. I actually color my eyes and stuff in highlights. Some people use the eye tint. I don't. I, uh, I tend to like this a little better. like that just to give it a little tonage change I you know I use different colors but you would do that basically for everything now let's do I'm gonna bring in a different picture I'm not even gonna save this one but um, I'm gonna bring in another picture and show you about backgrounds just a quick thing on backgrounds um, so Okay, they found a good one. Let's do this one. Well, there it goes. Okay, say if I wanted to change this background to something different. Hold on just a second. Okay, so if we wanted to change the background on this, what I would do, what I normally would do is I'm going to look for a replacement background. So I'm going to go to... I'm going to look at backdrops or backgrounds and look at images and see if there's something that I like better. Like maybe maybe something like this with a pattern. That's actually kind of small. And I try to get ones that are pretty high quality. I don't like ones that aren't they kind of distort and that one's pretty I kind of like it so let's save it so save image as and then wherever you want to save it um, I'm just gonna put mine on my desktop for now since I'm just using it for an example I'm gonna go back to pick monkey and you see this one that looks kind of like a grid it's called textures I'm gonna click on it There it goes. Up the top, it's going to say your own. So we're going to click that. We're going to push open my texture and we're going to go and find it. I'll put mine on my desktop and I'm going to push open. Okay, and what it's done is it's actually laid it on top of this. And you can tell if I turn the fade up or down. It's still there. So, what we're going to do is we're going to push right here where on this box. If this box doesn't show up for some reason, it just looks like this. If you push this paintbrush right here, it's going to bring this box up and it's going to say reverse effect. And that's what we want. So, now we can see what the original was. And I'm going to take my brush size up on this. And I'm just going to start painting. And it, one of the things that you can do 
is over here where it says blend mode. If you change your blend mode, it's going to change it some. Like if I want it to look identical to the one I downloaded, I would put it on normal. And I would just start coloring it in. And it'll just go right over it. I can change the saturation and the colors. And I, what I try to do is I try to get all the big areas first. And then I'll take my brush size down smaller and I'll zoom in and get those smaller areas. And I went over on his hair, so I would go to back to original and go back down. And then what I would do, I mean, go ahead and get this area too, because it's, ah. It's still kind of a bigger area. Once you start zooming in, it really makes it a bigger area. I'm going to zoom in. And then I'm going to take my brush size down. I'm going to take my hardness up. And that's going to give me like a really crisp line so you won't get as much overflow. And I would just go around on these areas. until I get them all colored in. And this takes a while. I'm not going to get real perfect on here because I'm just ah, trying to show you how it works. I'm not going to make it that bad. But I'm just basically showing you how this works. And the smaller your brush, the more control you're going to have. You're not going to be coloring over his ears and things like that. But that's good for this tutorial for me to just show you how it works. So you can zoom out. It's bothered me. Okay. We can zoom out before, after. Anyways, and uh, then it would be done. If you decided for some reason you wanted a different background, so you did this one and then you're like, I really don't like how that looks. Instead of pushing cancel, you can just go op open my textures and pick a different background or texture that you want to put behind that and it will actually change it without you having to color it all in all over again which is very helpful that's it's kind of an ordeal like this one for example and uh, we can go over to move and we can size that to make it bigger or smaller but I really don't like how that one looks so I'm gonna actually pick a different one I mean, you can just do this. You can do this all day until you find one you like. And I try to keep a pretty good collection. And I honestly think that the one I was using a while ago probably is going to be the best fit. I like it. So I'm actually going to go back to it. And that is a pretty good fit. So I would, I would go to push... I'm going to size it back down. I'm going to go ahead and push apply, and it would be done. And then I could, I mean, I could go in and I could add some effects. So I'm going to go back up here to this brush, add an effect. I could put an Orton effect on it to kind of blend it together and fade it down. This one really doesn't work real well with Orton, but depending on the picture, it does. Orton's a, it, Orton's a really neat process. It kind of smooths your photo out some. Um, but you can, you can use all kinds of different, filters or you know there's really all kinds that you can use to to do different things 
or give different effects. It's all about how you want it to look. And the, and ultimately that's that's the goal. Is I mean when you're happy with it, you know, that's that's the bottom the the end goal here. So anyways, that's my tutorial. If you have any questions, just let me know. Um, let me do a quick overview right quick. Blemish fix, airbrush tool, wrinkle remover, shine reducer, a blush boost, and we could even do a little blush boost on him if we wanted to. Take my, I try to make my brush size about the size of the apple of the cheek. And if you find that's not pink enough or you need it pinker, you can always go up. You can even go to a different shade. I kind of like that one. Um, this will give you a different shade, and so this will allow you to pick a color. So you apply that. You can do spray tans. Um, teeth whitening lip tint. Lip tint you can also use the color with because it allows you to pick your own color. And it's a little bit different. Let me show you why. Um, say for this green, I'm going to take the hardness down. I'm going to leave my brush size up. I want to show you something. See how bright that green is? I can take the tone or the intensity down and the tone down and it becomes a dark green. Light green, dark green, really bright not so bright. So, uh, and that's the lip tint tool. Then you have your eye brightener tool, which his eyes are real dark, so it's not going to do it. Um, an eye tint tool that gives you the ability to change the eye color, eyeliner, eye shadow, um, red eye remover. Oh, I missed one. Mascara. This one can kind of give you a 3D effect. I'm going to go ahead and take my brush size up some. And it helps pop out the details sometimes. See how much more detailed his ear and all that is. It's kind of a dark photo, so it's hard to tell. But that one's good for that. You can bring it all the way up or all the way down. But you see how more how it's more intense and more detailed there. Um, <clears throat> got a red eye remover here. A nip tuck feature, which I go over that in a different video. A weight loss feature. I think that's a new feature. I don't remember seeing this one. So I think it's it might have been there. It's not one I've ever used. Um, got a whisker growth to help grow facial hair. It's going to go in the direction that you move your mouse. Um, then you got your highlights and then you have your clone and that's to erase issues like uh, scratches, marks, things like that. So if you have any questions just let me know. Um, and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Thank you.